Hey everyone, Luke here from Bedford Camera and Video, and we've got the Sony MCX500 live stream switcher here, and we're gonna be going over a step-by-step -step guide on how to set this product up and get you on your way live streaming. So there's a few things that you need in addition to the MCX500 to make this system work properly. You're gonna need your inputs, so cameras, and right now we have two camcorders, the NX80 and the Z90. You'll also need a way to connect those cameras to the switcher via an HDMI cable or an SDI cable, depending on which camera you're utilizing. We'll also need a way to connect the MCX500 to the internet. So we have a router and ethernet cables that we will be plugging into a computer as well as the MCX500. You'll also need a dedicated monitor for the MCX500 that allows you to see all of the inputs that you have currently connected to the board. So let's get started on setting everything up. The first thing we're going to do is actually plug the MCX500 up to power. To do this, you're going to utilize the included power supply. You'll actually insert the power supply on the rear side of the board. Now that we have the board plugged up to power, we can turn it on. To do so, you're going to press the on off switch in. You'll also know that you've done this properly when all of the buttons on the face of the board start to illuminate. This is the startup sequence for the MCX500. It does take a little bit, so make sure that you wait for it to turn on properly. Once the power's been turned on the MCX500, you'll notice that you need to set up the board initially. This is where you will input the date and time and make sure that your time is accurate. For those of you utilizing time codes, this will be very important. It will then ask you to choose what system format you want to utilize. We're going to be utilizing 1080 at 60p for our system format. Now that we have the board turned on, we can set up the monitor for the multi-viewer. This is the computer monitor or TV screen that is HDMI compatible that we set aside initially. To do so, you're going to utilize the HDMI cable by inserting it into the multi-viewer input on the rear of the MCX500. Now that we have the multi-viewer set up, we can now set the MCX500 up to connect to the internet. To do so, we're going to utilize two ethernet cables from the board, one being plugged up to the PCUI and the streaming port on the rear of the MCX500. You will then take both of those ethernet cables and plug them into your router. Once you've connected both ethernet cables from the PCUI and the streaming port on the rear of your MCX500 to the router, you'll now be able to connect your computer to the same router. This can be a PC, a Mac, laptop, or desktop, it does not matter, as long as you have the capability of hardwiring an ethernet cable from the computer to your router. Now that we have the board and the computer connected to the internet, we can start connecting all of our camera inputs. If you're utilizing HDMI out cameras only, be sure to use channel three and four. Three and four are dual channels which allow you to choose between an SDI input and an HDMI input. If you're utilizing SDI output cameras, you can choose between channel one and four. Now that we have both cameras connected to the three and four input, we need to assign those inputs to HDMI. To do so, you're going to click the assign button and then hit three. This will pull up a menu that is input three and it'll have four different options to choose from. One that will say enable and disable and one that says SDI and HDMI. Because we're utilizing HDMI output cameras, we do need to make sure that we are utilizing the HDMI setting on both input 3 and 4. Once you've finished changing both input 3 and 4 to enabled and HDMI, we're going to click the assign button one more time.
At this point, there are two different ways that you'll be able to tell which camera is being utilized currently. That'll be the program out screen on your multi viewer, as well as the button is illuminated for which camera channel you are selecting. Now that you have everything assigned properly, you can see which camera you are currently live streaming via the program out on the monitor, as well as the illuminated button on row A. Row B is utilized to show you what feed is coming up next. So this will be just left of your program out screen on your multi viewer. You can switch between your standby cameras utilizing row B. This does not affect the current live view of your program out. It only adjusts which camera you're choosing for your next feed. At this point, we're going to insert an SD card into the front of the board on the right hand side. This will allow you to record all of the media that you have coming from cameras and audio sources onto one device. Once you've inserted the SD card into the MCX500, we need to format that memory card to work properly with the board. To do so, you're going to hit the utility button on the right hand side of the board, and then you're going to go to page two of three in the menu system until you see format media. Follow the prompts to format the memory card from there. At this point, we're ready to start live streaming. So let's go ahead and get that set up. To do this, you'll need to hit the utilities button on the right hand side of the board. You'll need to go to utilities page two of three for this menu setting. Once there, you'll hit network and then select LAN. Once you've selected LAN and it is highlighted, go ahead and hit the button connect in the bottom right hand corner. Once you've hit connect, the MCX500 will generate an IP address. You can utilize this IP address to access the PCUI on your computer. This stands for Personal Computer User Interface. Once the IP address has populated, you'll type in the number into your web browser on the computer. Once you've entered that number exactly the way it shows on the MCX500 into your web browser, it should prompt you with a box saying MCX500 PCUI configure the password. At this point, you'll enter in a password that you will remember for the next time you access this web page. Once you've entered in that password, you'll hit log in. At that point, you have access to the PCUI for your board. Once here, we're actually going to go over to setup on the top left corner of the screen and then come down to streaming. Currently, we're going to be connecting to YouTube, so we're going to utilize profile one. Now, once you've selected profile one, you'll notice that in the top corner on the left hand side, you'll see YouTube. Underneath that, a space for your URL, stream key, and encode presets. This is where you'll enter the information from YouTube Live into your PC UI. So at this point, we need to actually go to YouTube on our web browser, open it up in a different window, and then go to your YouTube channel. Once there, you'll go to the top right corner and click the camera button that has a little plus sign in it and go down to YouTube Live. Once here, it'll pull up a new tab that says New Stream. Now what you're going to do is select Create a Title and add a title for your live stream. I'm also going to select unlisted and then you can add a description, add a category, and even schedule for later or upload a custom thumbnail. Underneath that, it'll ask you if this is appropriate for children. I'm going to hit no for now and then create a stream. Once done loading, you'll be prompted with another window that says stream setup help. This is where you'll find your stream key and your URL to paste into your PC UI. At this point, I'll hit copy for the URL. I'll then go to our tab that has the PC UI loaded into it. From there, I'll paste my URL into the URL bar and do the exact same thing for the stream name. 
on YouTube, it'll be the stream key. Now that you have the stream key and the URL copied and pasted into your PC UI, you'll notice that there's an encode setting there. I'm going to leave it on high bandwidth. Underneath that, you'll see all of the settings that you are currently going to utilize for streaming. I have everything set the way I need it, so I'll go to the bottom right hand corner of the screen and click set. You'll know you've done this step properly when you are presented with a window that says streaming settings complete. You'll hit OK and go back to the tab that has YouTube loaded in it and hit done. Now that you've actually set up your stream key and your URL into the PC UI, you'll notice that there's a window on YouTube saying connect streaming software to start preview. At this point, YouTube is trying to find a connection, allowing your camera to be visible on the screen. So to do that, we're going to go back to the physical board itself and hit the button streaming just left of the touchscreen. Once there, you'll see a few different options. And of course, we're going to utilize the YouTube setting. So we're going to click one, and then we're going to hit start in the bottom right hand corner of the touchscreen. At this point, you should see that the streaming button lights up blue. I do want to make a note saying that this does not start your live stream process. This only starts the feed from the board to YouTube. So if you go back to your YouTube page, it is trying to connect a camera system to your YouTube. Once it connects to the MCX500, you'll notice that you have a preview on the top left of your screen. Now that the MCX500 and your YouTube channel have connected, you'll be able to start your live stream. From here, you'll go to the top right corner of your screen and click Go Live. Once you click the Go Live button, you have started your live stream on YouTube. There is a slight delay between what your viewers are seeing and what you are seeing through your multi-viewer. Depending on how fast your internet speeds are will determine the latency between what your viewers are seeing and what you are seeing in person. When you're finished with this live stream, you'll go to the top right corner of your screen again and hit end stream. Once that's done, you'll go back to your MCX500 board and hit stop. You have now successfully started and stopped a live stream video from your MCX500 to YouTube Live. Now we're going to set up Facebook. It's a very similar process to YouTube, but you do need to make sure you have the current firmware update installed on your MCX500 to make it compatible with Facebook Live. To connect your MCX500 to Facebook Live, we'll go back to our PC UI and go to streaming and then profile 2. If you notice, the label is already selected as Facebook. This is where you're going to enter in your URL and your stream name or stream key into the PC UI. To get this information, we're going to log into Facebook and then go down to where you would post a new post. And it should have an option that says create live. You'll be prompted into a different window and at the top you'll hit connect instead of camera and from there you're going to come down and click use persistent stream key. Here you'll be able to copy your URL as well as your stream key to paste into the PC UI. Once the URL and stream name have been entered into the PC UI, you'll go to the bottom right hand corner and hit set. Then you'll have a completion notification and you'll hit OK. From here, you'll go to your MCX500 and hit the button streaming and select option number two labeled Facebook. If everything has been entered properly, it should have a few different pieces of information there and a button in the bottom right corner that says start. Once that's done, you'll notice that the streaming button has lit up blue. If you go back to your Facebook page on your computer, you'll notice that you have a preview generated on the left side of your screen. I do want to make a note 
that when you hit start on the MCX500, that does not start your live stream. That only starts the feed from your MCX500 to Facebook. To start the actual live stream, we're going to go back to our Facebook page and go to the bottom right hand corner and click go live. And there you have it. That's a step-by-step -step guide on setting up the Sony MCX500. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit like and subscribe to our page. I'm Luke from Bedford Camera and Video, and if you want to add this system to your setup, visit us online at bedfords.com. We'll catch you next time.